God bless you. Let's call Prophetess Tendo again to preach. Tendo, she said, powerful preacher. Tendo, preacher. Tendo, she's taking over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of God? Are you happy and ready for what God is about to do? I know I'm ready. Ask your neighbor and say, are you ready? Ask your neighbor and say, are you sure? Did you hear what daddy said? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I really love to thank God and Mama and Daddy for this opportunity to trust me with their pulpit to give a small, useless somebody like myself an opportunity to allow God to use a useless thing like me to convey a life-changing message to your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we excited for what God wants to do? Mommy and Daddy, once more, I thank you and may the good Lord continue to bless you. Can we all stand on our feet? I want us to go and sing this song.
up your hands and give you the praise for a minute. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. You can get me take your seat. Let us all open our Bibles. In the book of First Samuel, chapter seventeen, we will take our reading from verse thirty-one, and we will go down with it. Hallelujah! Can I read with you? Are you there? First Samuel, chapter seventeen, from verse thirty-one. I am reading. When the word of the Lord. When the words that David spoke were heard, the men reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. David to said to Saul, Let no man's courage fail because of him, Goliath. Your servant will go out and fight with this Philistine. Then Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight him. For you are only a young man, and he has been a warrior since his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and attacked it and rescued the lamb for, from its mouth. And when it rose up against me, I seized it by its whiskers and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, since he has taunted and defiled the armies of the living God. David says, The Lord, David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paws of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go. And may the Lord be with you. Let's jump and we go to verse 40. Then he took his shepherd's staff in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones out of the stream bed and put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, that is in his shepherd's pouch. With his sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. The Philistine came and approached David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked around and saw David, he dreaded and disparaged him because he was just a young man with a ruddy complexion and a handsome appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with shepherd's staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine also said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beast of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the corpses of the armies of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And what this entire assembly will know, that the Lord does not save with a sword or a spade. For the battle is the Lord's. And he will hand it over to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us close in our eyes and we pray for the word. Father, we thank you for the sharing of your beautiful word. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy this day. And we pray, Father, that as we sit in your presence to hear your word, let your word reconstruct us and align us back to your will. This day we pray that this word will bring fruits that will give glory to your name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I want you to read with me verse 45. Are you there? Can we read together? Let's read. It says, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you. Let me read it for you. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give your corpses of the armies of the Philistine this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beast of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. Can I read it how I have heard it in my heart? Then I said to the Philistine, to the enemy, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Charis Missionary Church. The God of the armies of Cherish, whom you have taunted, this day the Lord will hand you, the enemy, over and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give your corpse to the, of this Philistine's army to the birds of the sky and the beasts of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God. In Charis. Hallelujah. So that all the earth will know there is a God in Charis. Today I want to speak with you about manifesting the kingdom of God. Tell your neighbor and say it is time to manifest. Tell your neighbor loudly and say it's time to manifest. Here we are reading again about a young man, David, who the Bible says he was the keeper of his father's sheep. He was the tender of the flock. If you can read this chapter from the beginning, the Bible explained how David found himself in the battlefield. The Bible says the Philistine came against war against the Israel because they wanted to fight them. And David's father, because the war has been going on for days, was concerned about, about his sons because the Bible says his two sons, elder sons, were in the army, meaning they were there in the battlefield. And to my understanding, what kept them there in the battlefield was the fear that they had against the Philistine man who's called Goliath. The Bible says each and every day Goliath will come out and insult the armies of Israel by their God. And he will tell them, bring a man to me to fight. And if I conquer this man, you children of Israel will be our slaves. Or if this man conquers you, conquers me, we the Philistines will be your slaves. Hallelujah. This kept going on day after day. The Israels, the Israelites rather, were afraid. Why? Because this man Goliath is a giant. The Bible says he was tall, taller than everybody in the battlefield. He was almost twice the size of a normal human being. This was a beast, a man eater during the day. Hallelujah. The Bible says, David father one day called David and say, here's food, take to your brothers in the battlefield. And that's when, or that's how David found himself in the battlefield. Hallelujah. Don't make a mistake, David was not meant to be part of the war. David was the keeper of his father's ship. But because of the situation, he had to be sent to go and deliver food for his brothers in the army. In other words, David now found himself in a place or in a state where he was out of his league because he was only a young man. 
who had a rude complexion and a handsome appearance. In other words, David at that point, he had not even matured fully. Because all he knew was to keep his father's flock. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says when David got into the battlefield, him seeing what has been going on, the Philistine defiling the armies of the Lord of, the Lord of hosts, he had to ask a question. What is going on? What is happening here? And they explained to him the situation. The Bible says, David asked a question. What is it that the king says he will do for the man who will fight the Philistine? The Bible said, one of the soldiers explained and said, the king says he will give his daughter in marriage to the person. Amongst those people, Eliab, who was David's brother, had when David was asking, knowing that David is a young man, he was concerned and said to David, what are you doing because you are a small boy? This is not a place for people like you. You should be behind your father's flock and keeping it. What are you doing here? You are concerning yourself with matters that don't concern you. The Bible says, David said, it's only a question I'm asking. When his brother was angry, he continued and asked the next person, what is it that the king will do for the men who conquers the Philistines? And when he was told, somebody heard him and went and told King Saul. It was during the, the reign of King Saul. And when King Saul had the curiosity of a young man, he demanded for his presence. The Bible says when David got there, Saul was also surprised, but you are a young boy. How can you be concerned with such matters? How are you going to do it? How are you planning to overcome the Philistine? I love what the Bible says. David said to him, while I was tending my father's sheep, when a lion and a bear appeared, I didn't run. I held it and I struck it up. And I saved the lamb from its mouth. When the enemy or the animal retaliated, I grabbed it and, and broke it. And I was free from it. Now this Philistine is no exception for me. What I have done to the lion and the bear, this day I will do to the Philistines. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said like the bear and the lion, the same today will happen to this Philistine. You can imagine a young boy who has not much word saying to somebody who's twice their size, today I will feed your flesh to the, to the birds of the sky and the beast of the wild. It means that there is something that was in David, that the army of Israel, at that moment, they didn't have. It means for David to find himself in the battlefield was not a coincidence, but it was an appointment for the Philistine to know that there is the Lord of hosts, of the armies of Israel, that you do not defile and go scot-free. There is a saying that people say that you don't mess with me and live to tell the tale. This is the time, child of the king, for us, me and you, to manifest. And as we are manifesting in this life, for the world to know, like David says, that the world should know that there is a God in Charis Missionary Church. I always say to you, I cannot mention any other church because I've never been there. I've never tried their God. I don't know which protocol he used. I don't know which principles he used. I don't know which, which obligation or which rules that he follows. But the God of Charis, I know, I have seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like David, we are in this world to manifest the kingdom of heaven in this earth so that the world will know that there is a God in charis that lives and delivers his children. 
We are living in a world where the Bible says it is the last days where people are going against or after what their flesh desires. We are living in a time where people don't want to hear the truth anymore. We are living in a time when the Bible says people will be lovers of themselves than the lovers of God. This is a good time for me and you to bring to life and existence the manifestation of the kingdom that we have been called to and saved upon for people to know there is God. Hallelujah. What he was born for was not going to come. Goliath was the obstacle or the door that is closed in front of him for him to reach greatness which is on the other side. I am here to let your Goliath know that today is the end day for you. Today is that day where you are dying and I am opening the door to my destiny. The Bible says before I was formed in my mother's womb, God knew me and he called me by name. Meaning at that moment, God said, Tendo, you are called to preach and nation I will be saved through your life. At that moment, God called you by name and say, hey, so and so, I am calling you forth and your job or your destiny is to be a kingdom financer. Your destiny is to feed the lame. Your destiny is to take care of the offense. Your destiny is to pray for the sin. Seek, they recover. That day is that day you must encounter your destiny and manifest to the glory of your God. Hallelujah. 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 I love verse 45 which says, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. Remember this man was huge to a point where he had his own God who carries his weapon. He had somebody who carries his spear. That's how special and huge Goliath was. This man is a man of protocol. You just don't approach him anyhow. You must have a strategy of approaching this man, which is what killed the children of Israel because when they looked at him, they saw impossibility. When they looked at Goliath, they saw discouragement. They saw death instead of life and promotion. They saw brokenness instead of being lifted to a higher level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David said in verse 45, you come with all these things, but I come. I come to you in the name of the Lord. The Lord of hosts who you have defiled this day. This is a young man who didn't even have anything to fight with. The Bible says he only had a shepherd's sleeve and five stones. That's all he had to fight the Goliath. You only have the word of God and the Holy Spirit for you to overcome your Goliath. You don't need a spear. You don't need a javelin. You don't need a sword. You only need the word and the Holy Spirit who will tell you that when you are weak, he will make you strong. Who will tell you that the Lord will renew your strength. You will mount up with wings like an eagle. You will run and not be weary. You don't need what the world has for you to manifest. You need the word, which is the shepherd's spear, and the Holy Spirit, which is the stones, the five stones that David picked from the ground. When you read the same chapter going down, the Bible says, David spinned his shepherd's spear, and he let go of the stone. The Bible says, when the stone hitted Goliath, it sank into his head. It didn't hit him and bounce. It hit him, entered, and stayed in his brain. Goliath had no choice but to fall. I love the Bible because the Bible says, David said, this day you will know, read it when you're going down, that God does not save with a sword. God does not need your javelin and your spear to save my life from your hand. Hallelujah. 
All I need is the word for me to come into manifestation. All I need is the word for me to come into existence. For me to manifest what God has done for me. What God has called you for. What God has predestined you for. I know there is a mountain and a Goliath in front of you. But I am here to tell you today, the end road for Goliath has come. The cul-de-sac for Goliath has come. Enough is enough for Goliath to stand in front of you and insult you with your God and say you have been serving this God for a long time and it looks like this God, there is nothing is doing for you. It seems like the more you pray, the more your problem increase. The more you fast, the more your problem increase. The more you say I'm serving God, the more your disease persists. The more you say I'm seeking the face of God, the more the enemy and the devil is digging that road for you that grave for you take courage child of God today is the day you manifest that grave the enemy has been digging for you don't worry it was just the valley where God was keeping you so that when you come out to the battlefield you'll be able to manifest that which he has called you for that sickness that has been standing in your way and you have been told there is nothing more that we can do for you all you have to do is to depend on medication I have come to let you know that today that Goliath that sickness it is not unto death but it is for the glory of the Lord to be revealed in your life yeah. hallelujah yeah. tell your neighbor and say it's time to manifest it's time to move to the next level it's time to do something new. Your place where you are, it has expired. Even the ground around you, it's showing there is no more life in this ground that you are standing. There is no more fruit for you to bear in this ground. It's time for you to stand up, pull yourself together, clean yourself like the child of the king, and take the first step and say, wherever he leads, I will follow. As long as he has called me by name, he will always lead and guide my footsteps. He can never bring me this far to come and shame me. David knew the kind of God he serves. David knew that this God cannot save me from a lion. And he come, he come and embarrass me in front of a human being. David knew this God cannot save me from a bear. And he come and shame me in front of a human being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are situations around you. That suggest is the end. I am here to let you know it's only the beginning. It is only the beginning. The Bible says after David killed Goliath, he used Goliath's sword to cut off his head. He didn't go to Saul and say, give me a sword. He used the same enemy's weapon. The weapon that was meant for him to die. He used the same weapon to cut off the head of the enemy. The Bible says even if they come in one way, in seven ways, for your sake they will run away. Even if they gather to eat your flesh, they will all stumble and fall for your sake. I am here to let you know that grave which was dug for you, today is the same pit that your enemy will fall into. You will bury your enemy and put a tombstone and forget there was ever a Goliath in front of you. Why? Because this Goliath is not for death. Death. This Goliath is not your end. This Goliath is just the beginning of your manifestation. That which God has called you by your name and said, I am setting you apart and I am calling you for this journey shall be fulfilled today. Stop looking for a sword and a spear and a javelin like the Israel did to go and conquer your Goliath. As long as you have the word and the Holy Spirit. As long as you have the word and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says majority is he who stands with the Lord. You don't have to have them physical and people seeing. The Bible says David said the battle, the world will know today that the battle is the Lord's. 
Muteta kuri the battle you are making it personal. Understand today the battle you come across, it's the Lord. It's not yours. Victory is yours to keep and attain, but the battle is never yours from the beginning. He says he fights the battle for you and he gives you the victory. That's the kind of God you serve. He fights the battle for you and gives you victory. Because David was on an assignment, an appointment that day in the battlefield. From that day, he was considered a great man. To the point where people of Israel sing praises for his name. David became important. Why? David did the unusual and manifested greatness for himself. David allowed Goliath to be there so that the whole world would know that there is God in Israel. And this God lives. All you have to do is for you to be on time and on appointment. For you not to be afraid but to manifest the will of God so that the world will know there is a God in Charis who is working for the betterment of your life. The God who fights and you retain the victory. The God who gives you the proceeds of what you didn't work for. It's time to manifest. Over are the days where we become Christians or going by. As long as I go to church and I'm a Christian and I'm a Christian for myself. You are not a Christian for yourself. You are a Christian for the world to know that there is God who saves. He didn't save you for your comfort. He didn't save you for your selfishness. He didn't save you for you alone. But he saved you with generation in mind. That if I save this person, the lineage and the generation of so and so will come come to know that there is God. I am here to encourage you, child of God, that when your family says to you, it is over with you, it is just the beginning. When the people reject you and undermine you and say there is nothing good that will come out of you, you are only but a boy. Just know this is, it is the right time for God to bring you into manifestation so that they can tell themselves and know that there is a God who lives. There is a God who lives. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tell your neighbor and say, it's time to manifest. Yeah. There are many things that happen to you that they block your existence. At times, it's as if you don't even exist. At times, you feel like what I'm doing is pointless because I'm not moving forward. At times, you feel like everybody has gone way ahead of you that you can't even catch up. Listen to me, child of God. Where you have been behind your father's flock, you were on right time doing the right assignment. You don't have to follow the route that everybody has followed. Everybody in Israel at that point was afraid for their life. But David took courage and said, I know the God I serve. I know what he's capable of doing. I know what he can do that all of you have forgotten. I have confidence in what he has done. Therefore, today I know he will do even more. My delay is not a denial. I was waiting for a right time to manifest. You have gone ahead of me. It seems like I'm going back in life. But I was waiting for a day like this for God to conquer Goliath for me and I'll be able to manifest on the other side. Because as long as Goliath is still alive, I can never get my promotion. As long as Goliath is still alive, I can never get my job. As long as Goliath is still alive, I can never get that business. As long as Goliath is still alive, I can never rise to greatness. Law and beauty. Behold, Charis, today is that day where Goliath dies for your sake and you step over to the other side and obtain the victory that has been set for you since the beginning of the world. Today is that day of manifestation. Hallelujah. Read Judges chapter 16. It speaks about a young man called Samson. Who the Bible says an angel came 
to his mother and said, you will be with child and this child is a special kind of a child. Will be a Nazareth from womb. You shall not eat certain things. You shall not drink certain things. Why? Because this is the special kind of a child. No razor should come upon his head. The Bible says the woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. Now Samson to show that he was a special child. The things that he did were not normal. The Bible says so. Samson had strength like of many men being alone because he was manifesting his purpose. He was manifesting the glory of God in his life. The Bible said he conquered many armies alone. Even to a point where Delilah would say, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He will just rise. The Bible says the robes they have tied him with, they will just melt away as if they were in fire. And when he does that, he will overpower all of them. To a point where the Bible says he killed a thousand men by a jaw of a donkey. Imagine how small a jaw of a donkey is. And he killed a thousand. Imagine the strength of this young man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you keep reading the story of Samson, the Bible says Delilah finally knew what was Samson's secret. Likewise, the enemy knows what is your secret. The Bible says she went and told the Philistine, he has told me all that is in his heart. Come and tie him. They came. When they came, he said, first shave off his hair. They did and tied Solomon, Samson. The Bible says, like usual, she mocked him and said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Samson, knowing his strength, he says, I will rise and overpower. He didn't know at that point his hair was gone. And now this is where the Philistine lost it. When they saw that they have shaved his head, they thought it was over. It's done. Finally, we got him. The Bible says he failed to overpower them. They took him and took him to prison. And they forced him to be a millimill grinder. When they got there, they plucked out his eyes. The enemy blinded your eyesight. So you don't get to see what's on the other side. The Bible says he worked day by day grinding millimill for the Philistines. And they were happy that finally Mupulushola, we have got him in a moment of despair. They forget that David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Although you think you have gotten me, he who keeps me does not sleep nor slumber. He watches over me day and night. They didn't know the Philistines when he was busy grinding millimil. His hair was growing back. The devil doesn't know that when he has kept you in that state, greatness, goodness, and more and mercy will keep following you all the days of your life. The enemy does not know when you are in that state of shame and rejection. And it's only crying that people see. God is busy turning it around for your good. There's a song that says, what the enemy meant for evil. God has turned it around for my good. That pit which was meant to swallow me and bury me, God was using it to prepare me so that when I come out, he will call you. I love Psalm 23 because he says, he prepares the table right in front of your enemies. When I personalize it, I say, he calls you. And say, hey, Linava hey, you who think she's useless, come here, come here, come.
come here. And when you come, he puts me in front of you. And he says, watch, he prepares a table right before you. In my presence, in your presence. Meaning at that point, there is nothing you will deny. I mean, there is nothing that you will do that will still work. Why? Because the grave or the pit that you have put me in, today I am out of it. And the table is being arranged right in front of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the enemy thinks it's over, it is your right time to come and manifest. When your enemy thinks it's over with you, it's the dead end. There's no more hope. The Bible says hope does not disappoint. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Hallelujah. Things that people cannot see. You have the assurance. That's faith. Why? Because I am manifesting the kingdom through my life. The Bible says after they have plugged his eyes, he couldn't see. And turning the mill mill for them, his hair was growing back. His strength was coming back. His vision was coming back. Samson didn't need his eyes to kill thousands of Philistines. He only needed his hair to finish them. The Bible says when they were happy celebrating, finally we got him. They called all their lords, all their kings, and made a feast. Today we have buried him. Today we are going to bury him. After this, she will never rise. At that moment when they were celebrating, the Bible says the lords were inside the hall. The hall had an upstairs. Upstairs, there were about 3,000 men and women who were also celebrating that finally, that enemy, finally that Christian we have got here. When demons are jubilating with the devil, that finally... She's going nowhere. Your hair is growing back. The Bible says, Samson asked the boy who was close by and say, please, where are the pillars? The Philistines, when they were seeing him staggering, they were saying, ah, shame. Oh, oh it's a, he can't even, oh, he can't even stand. Oh, shame. He, oh, he's tired, shame. Samson, the boy, showed him the pillars. The Bible said he held both pillars. Hallelujah. When he held both pillars, they were still rejoicing. Hey, she's going nowhere. He's going nowhere. They will never amount to anything. The Bible says Saul's strength came back. He pushed those pillars. And all the Philistines died in seconds. I am here to tell you. Allow your hair and your strength to grow back. So that that enemy you have been facing. That generational curse you have been fighting. That discouragement, disappointment you have been facing. Grow strength today to push its pillars. And it dies out in seconds. The Bible says the Philistine he killed that day were more than the Philistine he killed while he was still alive. Meaning at that point, Samson became a record breaker. We're still talking about the man Samson. A man who killed thousands when he was blind. You don't need your sight to see where you are going. The Bible says we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. It is he who leads you in the path of righteousness. Who knows where he's taking you? All you have to do is to stand up, pull yourself together like a child of God and say, I am a child of king. I am a child of a savior. I am a child of a God of the armies of charis, missionary church. Where the presence of the Lord dwells, a land of possibilities, an arena of liberty. There is no way I can die in this
this hole. There is no way I can die in this end. This is not a cul-de-sac, but this is a beginning to my promotion. My manifestation is just starting. You've never heard about me. You are about to hear about me. Why? Because I'm about to be a commander of the armies of Israel. Why? Because there is a God who has saved me and called me up and said, stand here, I stood. He said, turn around, I turned around. He said, lift your leg and take a step, so I did. And he knows where he's taking me. All you have to do is to believe and have confidence. Tell that mountain, it is not the end. The Bible says it is what we speak that comes to pass. There is power of life and death in your tongue. I am here to remind you, speak life upon yourself. You will see life manifesting. It doesn't matter what they have rendered you to or what they have reduced you to. As long as you are God, you have God on your side. All things are still on track. As long as there is God on your side, let them live and prosper. Let them forget about you. Let them and allow them to reach to a state where they don't even have hope about you. And say, leva kari ini. Watiba leva kari wara pelo mo lefasi. Aishem. If God could indeed add the prayers, unkaba arabile chapelo changwa na makana nisa. If really God exists and He's alive in Charis, He would have healed her by now. If God exists and really he hears, he would have done something by now. Allow them to reach a state of no hope so that tomorrow when you manifest, they will not take glory in your manifestation. Allow them to render you worthless and useless. Allow them to ridicule and reject you for your good. Daddy always says that rejection is good for you. Tell your neighbor and say, my discomfort is good for me. My sickness is good for me. It doesn't look good, but trust me, it's good for you. You know why? Because that is the right place and the right space for God to show up for you. That is a state where it's a stage for God and God alone. There will be nobody who will come and say, Maraki Mutushi Jehu. But I helped him too. There will, there will be nobody who will come and say, Bai dia baba Peter Kamori Batushi Che Ae. Allow yourself to be in the battlefield. It's good for you. Tell your neighbor and say, It's good for me. This is my time to manifest. Hallelujah. Can you read with me 2 Samuel chapter 22? You read verse 33. Oh, hallelujah. Can I read? Are you there? It says, God is my strong fortress. He, says, he sets me blameless in his way. He makes my feet like the deer's feet, firm and swift. He sets me secure and confident on my highway. 35, he says, he trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend, pull back a bow of bronze. Tell your neighbor and say, he's, he trains my hands for war. The one thing that is killing us Christians this day is fear. The one thing that is killing us is fear. Wanting to know what's going to happen tomorrow. 
Wanting to know what will become of me tomorrow. Wanting to know people's opinions about you. And how they perceive you. And how they see you. They say you are a young boy and you are grieved. I'm a young boy. They say nobody in your family has ever done it. You say Mara. Yeah, nobody in my family has ever done it. They say nobody in your family gets a good job. All of you are laborers. So there's no point of you going to school. Lua and after metric, you don't go to school. You say, I'm going to search for a job in the contract. Nobody in your family has ever worked in an office. It can't start by you. And you be out of fear. You agree. And you look where you come from. And you say, yeah, eh? my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my father, they were all shepherds. What's so special about me? I'm here to tell you, you are the Samson of your family. There's everything special about you. You know why? Because there is something that God has put in you. When you were not yet born, before your parents knew we would, they would have you, there was something God installed in you. And God said a time and said in 2022, November, this week, this thing must manifest. It must bubble up and erupt in you so that springs of living waters can start flowing and those that are close to you will start drinking from it. When you are a child of God, you don't walk by status. You don't walk by what people do. Your life does not go how people plan your life. Yes, we plan plans, but it's him who decides which one he brings to pass. Because his greater plan is the one that must prevail in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The secret here is for you not to forget where God has took you. When they say nobody has done it in your family, you say, I know. But God has saved me from sickness. You were not there. When he cleansed me up, you were not there. When he healed me, you were not there. When he gave me my sight, you were not there. They say, this God of yours does not exist. Be like a blind man, but I mean, say, I'm not denying he might be a sinner. But when he was giving me my sight, you were not there. When I got tired of my sickness of blood, you were not there. Don't forget where God took you. Because this is the right time for you to manifest that which he was busy putting in you and building up in you. This is the right time for you to show up the, the big house that he was building. When you were right in the valley and they dig a grave for you and say it's over. They even write R.I.P. Rest in peace. You will beg for the rest of your life. Don't forget when he healed you, they were not there. When he saved you, they were not there. Yes, you don't have food to eat at the moment. But when he gave you your house, they were not there. Yes, you don't have the car that you are desiring. But when he gave you your job, they were not there. When he gave you that promotion without applying, they were not there. When he was setting you up apart, they were not there. When they, he was blessing you for marriage, they were not there. It was only you and him. David knew it was him and his God and the lion and the bear. His brothers were not there. Nobody was there. Not even his father, he was not there. So why would you allow the opinions of people who had not been there to detect where you are going? The fact that your mother is not married does not mean you are not a candidate for marriage. The fact that nobody has ever driven a car in your family does not mean you will never drive one. 
The fact that everybody dies a poor or a pauper in your family does not mean you cannot die a wealthy and a rich man. The fact that nobody is known in your family outside your village does not mean your name cannot be called in the four corners of the world. This is the right time to manifest. The Bible says he trains your hands for war. Meaning when you get to the battlefield, you don't have to concern yourself. How am I going to break this one? How am I going to do this one? Your hands are equipped. The Bible says he makes your legs like the legs of a deer. Very swift. In other words, you have become Punugaban pet. When they say we have finally gotten him, they are surprised you are standing there. When they say today finally they have fired you from work, they are surprised Monday you are coming back to work and you are going to a new office. Why? Because you are a child who has been called with a purpose. You are different. Your own is to manifest the kingdom. Bring the kingdom to life so that the world will know it. Tell your neighbor and say, it's time to manifest. Say it with meaning it. Say, it's time to manifest. Tell your neighbor where you are going to manifest from this moment. Ah, well, you know, it's like you are saving. It's like you are not sure. This Goliath, is he going down? Is he coming up? Is, is, he, is he coming? Is he going? Tell your neighbor where you are going to manifest. Don't forget you are born for greatness. Greatness is inside of you. I said here the other time, a lion doesn't give birth to a, to a cat. A lion gives birth to a lion. You are a child of a king, which means you are equally a king. You are a king in waiting. You are a prince waiting to inherit the throne of your father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor and say, it's time to manifest. Are you manifesting? Are you sure? Let's read Isaiah 40, 29. Are you there? Are you there? Are you sure? I want you to read it louder. Can you read? Read that verse louder to yourself. Read this way. He gives me power when I am weary. And when I have no mind, he increases my strength. Can you read it that way? He gives me power when I am weary. And when I have no mind, he increases my strength. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Meaning there is no time or moment where you are found powerless or weak. Like I said, what kills us is fear of the unknown. There is no way you are ever weak. There is no time where you are ever weak. Why? Because there is God in you. The one who created the heavens and the earth. Don't forget that Goliath in front of you is on time, was planned and purposed. Because if he's not there, you cannot come to manifestation. That discouragement is not a mistake. It's for you to be able to manifest. It's right on time. Your joblessness is not a coincidence. It is right on time. Why? Because when you are weak and weary, he renews your strength. 
The Bible says they that trust in the Lord, he renews their strength. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Powers and principalities, meaning your welfare, your weapons of our welfare, the Bible says, are not carnal, but they are mighty. They are not carnal, but they are mighty. Don't forget, David killed Goliath with no sword. But at the end, Goliath's head was cut with a sword. The weapons of our welfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. When that mountain is in front of you, and they say there is no way out, the weapons of my welfare are not carnal. I don't have to stand here and exchange words with you. I don't have to prove myself to you that I am worthy of this job. I don't have to prove myself to you that I am worthy for such and such blessing. I don't have to prove myself to you that I deserve to drive such and such a car. I don't have to work extra hard for you to see that I, can, I deserve to live in a mansion. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. You don't see them, but I still strike you. I don't need a spear to hit you, but I will still cut your head off with your own sword. I don't need words or degrees to prove to you that I serve a God. But by calling his name, he says he will hear from heaven and he will answer. He says when I knock, he will open the door for me. And whatever I ask in his name, it shall be given. Because I am manifesting his kingdom. I am bringing to life his purpose. All of us, we didn't come by mistake. There is a purpose why God has set us here. There is a reason why God has placed you where you are. Why you were born in that family. Why you are married to that person. Why you have those kind of children. There is a purpose. And I'm here to remind you and let your devil know that today is that day that the purpose of God concerning your life is about to come forth. Why? Because you have been waiting like a woman who's pregnant, waiting for labor pains so that she can go to the hospital and bring forth a child that will bring joy and smile to your face. Today is that day where your labor pain start kicking in. And trust me, very soon, a cry of a child will be heard out of your house. Today is that day where you don't need qualifications. You don't need certain standards for people to believe or to see that there is a God in Israel. You only need the word and the Holy Spirit who will lead and guide your footsteps that when he says I will lift you amongst many when he says I will bless you going in and bless you going out you believe even if your situation suggests otherwise yeah. even if my, suggest, my, my, my condition suggests otherwise there was a moment I said to my husband I don't think, honestly, I was solemnly born to come and be your wife and give birth to your children. There must be more to this temple. There must be more. I, I cannot be, my mother can carry me for nine months and she delivers me out of pain. And all I, I came here for is to be masmono. I no. My husband says to me, do you want to divorce me? I said, far be it from me. I don't want to divorce you. I'm just saying, there must be something that is special about me. Until I came across a verse that it says, I knew you before you were neat in your mother's womb. And I join you up together. And I set your days apart and calculated them. And I called you out by name and Satan. 
means uh, there is a nation somewhere in Charis, November 2022. There is a soul who is waiting to hear that today is a day of manifestation. That Goliath in front of you, today is over with him. That Goliath blocking your way, today is the end for him. That Goliath saying it's over, today is his burial day. Don't forget to write, rest in peace. Don't forget to write to poverty, rest in peace. You are not my portion. I am a child of a king. When they say you cannot make it, stand up and put yourself together and say, I am born of God, bread of the Holy Spirit, washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. He died on the cross that I may live and live again. He came so I can have life and have it more in abundance. He came solemnly for me to manifest. Say what you can say. I will preach the gospel. Do what you can do. I will pray for the sick. Do what you think you can do better. I will still prophesy. Do what you think you can tell me that I will still call out the name of the Lord. Do what you say you have. When you have done, nobody can have done it. I said to a God who opens the door where there is no way. I serve a God who opened the way for the children of the Israelites in the middle of the sea. I serve a God who serves me food out of ravens. I serve a God who supplies all my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. He says, I serve the God of cherries. Today is my day to manifest. It's been long you have tied me down. It's been long you have reduced me to nothing. And say it is over. I will never hear a cry of a child in my house. It's long you have said he will never marry me. It's long you have said I will never get my dream job. It's long you have said I will never get my healing. It's long you have said I will be confined to that wheelchair for the rest of my life. It's long you have said my children will never amount to anything. I am here to announce to that Goliath that today is the end of it all. Those children will take care of you in your old age. That guy, you will drive it in the land of the living. That sickness from today, it's over. Why you are manifesting? Stand up and tell three people, I am manifesting. Tell three people, I am manifesting. The Bible says in Psalm 141 that my soul, my soul has found an escape. The flow, fowler's snare is broken. Finally, I am free. Why? The Lord is my help. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my sustainer. You cannot tie me down. I am a child of grace. You cannot tie me down. I am a child of charis. You cannot tie me down. I can never be useless. I can never be worn out and die out. Why there's a purpose and a plan I must manifest in my life so that you people will know there is a God. There is a God in Charis. Yeah, Goliath, your time is over. There is a God of the armies of the Israel. The Lord of the armies of the Israel. He doesn't need a sword to cut your head. So says the Bible, even without a spare, I will still take you down. Why? Because he's the keeper of my soul. Even without a javelin and a sword, I will still cut your head off and break from the curse of the family. And I become the first person who becomes the blessing of my generation. And I become the first person who bloods a blessing of a generation. My children and my children's children, David said the righteous shall never be forsaken. No, his children will beg for bread. Why? There is God of the armies of Israel. 
Why there is God of Apostle Macananis who keeps watch over me? He says he will keep his angels watch over me that I must not dash my foot against the stone. Goliath is over. Goliath is over. I don't care whether you believe it or not. Goliath is over. I don't care whether they said it's impossible or not. Goliath is over. I don't care whether they say it's a generational sickness. It is over. I don't care if they say it is not possible with you. It is over. If the Lord be on my side, who can be against me? Who can be against me? If the Lord is on my side, hey, let them get married and give birth to useless children. I will come with my Samuel, a son who will be had long after I am gone. Hey, let them get jobs and drive smaller cars and say you are a Johnny Walker for life. Let them say you are a Johnny Walker for life. When you appear, you appear in a machine. The one that they hear you from a distance. When you are still coming, they say she's coming. Why? Because your car will be saying, announcing, yeah! Gay is God in charity. Tell your neighbor and say, there is God in charity. And today I am manifesting. Devil, whether you like it or not, Tendo will preach the gospel. Devil, whether you like it or not, I will travel the world and preach Jesus. Devil, whether you like it or not, the servant of God has spoken. The Bible says God is not a liar. Neither is he like a son of man to change his mind. That which the servant of God has said, that I will become against all odds. Can you stand up and clap your hands for Jesus? Can you clap your hands and thank him? You are manifesting. You are manifesting. You are manifesting. Yeah, you are manifesting that business. Take it as you are manifesting. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Take it as you are manifesting. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Take it as you are manifesting. Take it. Manifest, manifest. Manifest, manifest. Devil is over. There is nothing more you can do. Victory belongs to Jesus. It is over. I am manifesting today. Hey, manifest. Clap your hands and manifest.
Hey! Begin to praise him. Lift up your hands. Allow your voice to be heard. Praise him. It's time to manifest. Thank you, Him. You are manifesting as what? Well. Thank you, Him. The Spirit of God is moving everywhere. Amen. 